Hello everyone, welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, they told us that gun control saves lives. And that's what they told the voters, that's what they told you, that's what they told me. But maybe the data doesn't quite bear that out. Maybe there was a lot of false promises made to disarm you the lawful and responsible gun owner. I think it's time that we take a look back, take a little walk down memory lane, and take a look at how some of this legislation has really, in fact, worked out. So today, we're going to spend a few minutes and talk about all the lies they told in Olympia to pass gun control legislation. Okay, before we get down the road we're going down, proud to announce that this video is yet again being sponsored by the good folks at Security Gun Club in Woodenville, Washington. Yes, the Taj Mahal of indoor gun ranges. The facility is as nice as you will find. The only thing better over there is one, the staff, which is absolutely the best staff. So visit Tom and everyone else over there. And number two, security's absolute dedication to education at the forefront of all of their programs. You see Jackson, the head of training over there, former law enforcement officer, has developed an amazing curriculum that will cater to brand new beginners to firearms, to somebody who wants to get into really advanced carbine, red dot training, things like that. They got wound care, they got out of state concealed carry classes, and yes, yours truly is over there once a month to teach a basic law of self-defense. So. Visit them at securitygunclub.com. Now, that is security with an E. That is not a misprint. And listen, if you use the promo code WAGUNLAW, WAGUNLAW, and you can use this for any class they have over there, you will receive 10% off. So once again, visit them at securitygunclub.com. Okay, so the issue we're talking about today, and this was widely reported in local media last week, the Washington Association of Sheriffs and Police Chiefs released their annual report on crime data for the year 2021. Now, we're going to take a look at what the data on 2021 said, but before we do that, let's take a little walk down memory lane. You see, back in 2014, we had an initiative called Initiative 594. That was the, we are going to close the gun show loophole. You see, one of the big problems with violence in the state, apparently, was all the rogue gun dealers out there just wheeling and dealing firearms to otherwise uh, prohibited individuals. And then, of course, those prohibited people going out and using these firearms in a rampage of violence. So we passed Initiative 594 because, dang it, we're going to close the gun show loophole. That, of course, created a new section in the RCW, which now means that absent certain family relationships, all other private transfers need to go through an FFL. That, my friends, was going to save lives. Fast forward then to 2018, one of the most controversial initiatives probably in the history of the state of Washington, Initiative 1639. Now, although car tabs, the $30 car tabs, apparently encapsulated more than one topic and was later deemed unconstitutional, 1639, which covered a wide array of firearm issues, was, of course, deemed constitutional, but I digress. But that had a lot of different things. It had safe storage provisions. It had warning signs that the FFLs had to do. It had other uh, security devices that FFLs had to offer for sale. And then, of course, the big thing was the waiting periods on assault rifles, semi-automatic rifles, excuse me, and the 16, the dreaded 1639 safety class where you had to take a state-sponsored class over six topics to make sure you understood that guns are bad before you could take receipt of a semi-automatic rifle. That, too, was going to save lives. Well, fast forward to the spring of this year, our last legislative session, the bloodbath of a legislative session we had. Oh, you see, because there were three significant pieces of gun control legislation passed. There was 1630, which is a new restriction on various other places that we can no longer carry firearms in our defense, including many government buildings. Then there was 1705, House Bill 1705, which was going to rid the streets of the dreaded scourge of otherwise untraceable firearms. And then, of course, and the most controversial of all the bills to come through, Senate Bill 5078, what I like to refer to as the standard capacity magazine ban. 
All of those bills were passed. All of those bills were passed in the 11th hour on the last possible day, but all of them were passed because we're going to save lives. And so it is that mantra that every single gun control advocate in Olympia has been saying for years. This is all about saving lives. It's not about anything else except making our community safer and saving lives. So how has the law worked? Well, let's go directly to the source of who would know best about this, which of course is law enforcement, because there were 232 police agencies who had to report here. And this is the summary of the data, and it is a little bit alarming. Now, I suppose we should start with some good news. And the some good news is overall, crime is down when you take a look at the number of arrests. And you're like, oh, that's weird. I didn't realize that. Well, you didn't realize it because this is why crime is down. Crime is down because no drug offenses are being prosecuted anywhere in the state of Washington. If you think this is a problem that is exclusive to King County or the Puget Sound region, think again. Because we had a case come down uh, about a year and a half ago, State v. Blake, that ruled that our possession statute was unconstitutional. Candidly, I think the Supreme Court got the ruling right. I do. It was a good ruling. Um, it would have been a really, really easy legislative fix. They had to add one word to the statute and the problem would have been fixed. Uh, and the legislature instead has been worried more about the number of rounds you're carrying in your concealed carry firearm. But here's the bad news, okay? Yeah, cr overall crime is down because we're not prosecuting drug cases anymore. Congratulations, that's awesome. But we see the effects of it. And if you don't know the effects of it, just, you know, do, do a tour of the streets of Seattle and you'll see what an un controlled drug problem looks like because Seattle has what a lot of people believe is a homeless problem. What Seattle actually has is a heroin problem, which is disguising itself as a homeless problem. But here's the bad news, okay? In Washington state in 2021, there was 325 homicides, 300, it's almost one a day. Now that's only a 5.9% increase over 2020. But in 2020, there was a 47% increase in homicides. Okay, let me repeat that again. In 2020, we had a 47% increase in homicides. And then in 2021, we only had a 5% increase. What does that mean? That means in the last two years, homicide in the state of Washington has increased by approximately 52%. In addition to those terrible statistics, violent crime, okay, this is robbery, assault, some sexual assaults, and things of that nature, serious violent offenses increased in 2021 by 12.3%. Now, that's 12.3% above and beyond 2020. What was unique about 2020? Well, we had a little thing called Summer of Love going on here. We were out to defund the police. Um, and all of that was going on and, you know, it didn't work out real well for a lot of folks, but think about the amount of violent crime that occurred in 2020. And now there's a 12.3% increase on that in the year 2021. And perhaps the most alarming data to pull from this is this crime clock, which basically tells us how frequently are we having offenses committed. Okay. And Listen, this is scary, okay? Because here's what some of the data shows. A murder occurs every 1.1 day. Rape occurs every 3.4 hours. A forcible sexual offense, excluding rape, occurs every 2.7 hours. An aggravated assault occurs every 30.1 minutes. A simple assault occurs every 11.2 minutes. Kidnapping or abduction occurs every 6.4 hours. Robbery occurs every 1.5 hours. Burglary every 12.4 minutes. Say that again. Burglary occurs every 12.4 minutes. Arson every 5.4 hours. And the list goes on and on. And obviously, I'm going to put a link for this full report down in the description box below. But you see, here's the problem. All of the people who advocated for 594 and 1639 and 1705 and 1630 and 5078, 
all promised the voters of Washington State that this is how we save lives. This is how we make our communities safer. The data simply points out that these policies and these laws have failed miserably. Something we always knew to be the case because the problem is not the lawful and responsible gun owner. Gun control is never about the guns. It's about the control. Now, let us also remember, while all of these politicians were screaming that disarming you, the lawful and responsible gun owner, was going to save lives, many of these same politicians were decrying for the defunding of local police departments. So in the last two years, Washington residents have experienced a significant decrease in funding of local police departments, leading to depleted police forces and a rapid escalation of crime across the board. At the same time, that state government is looking for new and creative ways to disarm its otherwise lawful and responsible citizens. Listen, I had a professor in college who taught me statistics who right before the final said that the only thing statistics ever have accurately proven is that women have more babies than men. I actually disagree with that. I think statistics can prove a lot of things. And one of the things that the data clearly shows here is that all of these pieces of gun control legislation, all of which were promised to you, the voters of Washington, that this was going to make your community safer and save lives, have failed to accomplish any one of those tasks. The problem is not the lawful and responsible gun owner. That's why we have done this video and this video here, which talks about what the real problem with violence in America is. It's not gun violence, it's violent criminals, and we need to start doing something about that. Listen, you may have more questions about this issue or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, and if you do, don't ever hesitate to contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or, of course, you call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.